To add a user task step to your workflow, you can expand the Workflow Designer Toolbox by clicking on the arrow button here in the upper left of the window. Then you can find the user task under the basic category of Workflow Tools. Drag and drop the user task step option over to an empty slot on the Workflow Canvas. Once it lands on the canvas, notice the exclamation point icon that appears. This signifies that we still need to configure this workflow step. To do this, select the user task to highlight it, then expand the step configuration panel on the right side of the window if it isn't already open. You should see the available tabs to configure based on the selected task on your workflow canvas. Now on the first configuration tab called task, you can add your instructions to task recipients, basically telling them what they need to do to complete their assignment. You can also configure your actions for this task on this tab. I'll use the most common options of approve and reject for this task by first clicking on the quick example option called both. You can add as many actions as your process dictates by clicking on the plus button. You can also delete actions if necessary. Clicking on the eye icon for an action will toggle the action visibility on the K2 work list. If an action is not visible on the work list, users must open the form to select that action for the task. Moving on to the form tab, use this area to configure your method of interacting with task assignees by presenting a form to them. The form type can be either a K2 smart form, SharePoint standard form, a custom form of which you will provide a URL, or you can choose to present no form. By selecting smart form, you will then need to go out and browse the K2 categories to find your smart form for this task. We saved the configuration of that for another tutorial section, but know that the configuration will take you through tying in data source references from the form, rules configuration for when to open the K2 task for actioning, configuring form states, and what to do after your form has been submitted. Select the Recipients tab to configure who receives task assignments for this user task. You can use this section to specify individual users or Active Directory groups and dynamic recipients with item reference fields. You can also create recipient groups, then configure rules to determine which of those recipient groups will receive a task based on conditions plugged into decision logic rules. For this example, I'm just going to leave the recipient set to Originator and move on to the Notification tab. If you want to send an email task notification to your recipients, you can configure what that looks like on the notification tab. You can customize the subject and the body of the message. For more clarity in your message, open the context browser, then drag over context fields from your item references. You can insert functions and smart object values amongst other things. You can also add file attachments from the context browser references to the message here at the bottom. Once you have configured the task actions and configured who receives the task, you can use the Results Voting tab to determine the task results rule. The results rule determines the outcome path for the task after it is sent to and completed by your task recipients. For example, you can specify the number of recipients that need to respond to the task before it moves on by either taking the first recipient to respond, you can work with the consensus of a group in a voting scenario or configure more customized rules. Other options on this page allow you to set how many responses are available to a group. For example, maybe you only need three out of five responses. You can also enable the resolving of an Active Directory group to individual user tasks if necessary. The Reminders tab allows you to configure when and how you want to remind task recipients that they need to complete their task assignment. In other words, do you want to remind the task recipient or their manager that the task is coming due for completion? You can set up an email reminder to go out after a configured time period. That email message is customizable the same way other messages are. You can also escalate and redirect the user task to another person, such as the original recipient's manager, if necessary. The Deadline tab handles when to expire the task if recipients have not actioned the task within a certain time frame. Basically, if you have a user task that does not necessarily need to be completed for the workflow to move on, you can set a deadline for the task, then when that moment has been reached, just expire the task and evaluate the outcome direction you want the workflow to take from there. You can set expiration on a specific date, 
a dynamic date using a date function or item reference field, or after a certain amount of time has passed based on when the task started. Let's move on and look at the General Properties tab. In here, you can configure the user task's name, description, and priority. You can also elect to show or hide the name label over on the Design Canvas. The Notes field allows you to enter in additional information about the specifics of the workflow for other workflow designers and architects. Finally, the Exceptions tab allows you to configure how you would like to log unhandled exceptions that may occur within this user task. Now, once you finally get your configuration done with the user task, head back over to the Workflow Tools menu over here on the left, back up to the Logic group of tools, and drag the Workflow Decision step over to the Design Canvas. From here, you can hover over the user task, click on the plus sign icon, and drag the line down to the decision step to branch the workflow based on your user decisions. You can consult the user guide for more detailed information on each of these sections as they relate to configuring the user task.